Glad to know you're still there. We're just before now, we were talking with Nick Agule on the problem of housing in Nigeria, and he outlined some of the solutions that he felt uh, should be uh, brought by the present administration and any government in the first place. So government should make uh, the place conducive enough and the environment so, so friendly that investors can come in. And some of the inve investors that we know are real estate uh, a owners, uh, so to speak, or people in the real estate sector to come in, uh, come in as private individuals. And we are lucky to have one person in that sector, a, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, uh, Landway Investment Limited, Ms. Sheila OJ. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we fear the real estate people rather than love them. And I'll tell you why. Uh, so many people have this belief that once the real estate people get into a community, they take all the houses that are affordable, build the houses that, that are not afford affordable, and kick us out into the streets. What is your, uh, what should we believe about the real estate people uh, rather than if, it, if this is not the notion that we should have? Well, um, it's definitely not the case. What you find with real estate um, investors and developers is that they bring value to um, any community that they come in. And what I mean by that is a lot of times when in certain parts, looking at certain parts of Lagos, you find that um, certain infrastructural things have not been put in place. And what you find is that the developers are coming in, they're setting up roads, they're bringing lights, they're bringing water, and that's what increases the value of these properties or this land. Um, and yes, I do understand the, the challenge of saying, okay, now the, it's a lot more expensive than it was, but however, look at the value that has been brought to the area vis-a-vis -vis what was there before. Yeah, but we're also concerned. When you're doing what you do, uh, it's mm -hmm. like it's affordable by only the rich in society. What do you do to cover mm -hmm. the people who are not, who are low-income earners, for instance? Mm -hmm. So I would say that first things first, when it comes to Lagos, because Landway does um, only operates in Lagos, um, Lagos is not affordable. Um, unlike what we would like to say is affordable housing, the land alone in Lagos is in high demand. Reason because we have very high population, um, we have a housing deficit. So when it comes to just the barest, which is the land where the house is built, you find that it costs quite a bit. By the time you start doing all your um, construction costs, and if you're looking at the way the market is at the moment, um, you find that, again, the prices increase. Now, how does that help with the challenge of people not being able to afford or some people not being able to afford these, these properties? We find that... Um, Luckily, we're putting put with putting particular um, infrastructure in place. Um, there are certain areas in which it's possible to put what is like a social housing pro, um, program. However, to do that, there has to be what is a synergy and a partnership, like a public-private partnership with the government, where they where the land is either allocated or given at a very discounted rate for it to be affordable. Like I said, the barest of it all is the land and land is not necessarily affordable, but once you can have that, or you can reduce that cost, then we can then have conversations around affordable housing in a city like Lagos State. So what are deliberate policies, if you may, that government needs to put in place to make sure it's conducive enough for you to invest and uh, for the people to enjoy? I would say, I, maybe not really speaking towards policy, but more of having more dialogue with a lot of these investors, a lot of the private sector investors who are, you know, putting in their sweat, blood and tears into this. Um, more dialogues to understand what the challenges are and in in understanding what the challenges are, knowing in what ways that they can support, and if it's through policy, if it's through, um, if it's through support, if it's through um, better infrastructure, just knowing what the what can be done and how we can collaborate together to ensure that the average Nigerian can actually afford um, a home of their own. 
So what are some of these challenges that the real estate investors um, have to face all the time? Um, oof, it's quite a lot. Um, I would say first things first, because, you know, I was just talking about government, it's also a lot of change in policies and regulatory um, uh, a lot of regulatory um, standards that need to be addressed. But even just looking at the economic situation at the moment, I mean, it's no, it's no surprise with what's going on with FX and inflation. You find that your cost of building has increased. Just between, say, in the last few months, between September and now, the cost has increased by almost 25%. Because again, we are heavily dependent on importation. So quite a lot of things that need to be done to finish these houses and finish these units are imported. And so you find yourself um, a victim to that. In addition to that, you then have labor costs on the rise as well. You also have the cost of even your transportation and your logistics of moving one thing from one side to the other. So. For real estate investors and real estate developers at the moment, it's a very, very interesting time for the industry as a whole, where you want to do so much more, but you find yourself having rising costs on the daily. And because of those rising costs, you are um, you know, either forced to have conversations with your clients to say, this is what we can do. Or in some cases, you are looking for other strategies of how you can hedge against these rising costs. Mm. It, it looks scary, especially for the person who is trying to go into real estate uh, for the first mm -hmm. time. What advice would you give to this kind of people who intend to enter mm -hmm. into that sector? Well, it depends on when you say enter into the sector, there are two different ways. So you're either entering as an investor or you're entering as a developer. So I would look at being as an investor. Um, regardless of the challenges, land is still or real estate is still a form of investment that appreciates over time. Therefore, it's something that you can definitely um, look into. So look, do a lot of your research understand the markets, understand the market trends, and then look into the areas in which you want to invest. Um, I think for most people, there is, the on, there is the notion of, oh, I just want to invest because I'm going to end up living there. But you don't always have to do that. There's, there's different ways where you can get property and just looking at how the market is at the moment and understanding that there's going to be increasing um, increasing demand for housing. Lagos, for instance, we have a housing deficit problem. Well, Lagos is big, at the same time it's small. In the sense that we have a very large population, um, it's estimated that every, every day we have almost 2,000 people coming into Lagos from other parts of Nigeria, which means that housing is very important. If you go to specific kinds of, um, to specific parts of the state, you would see there's a lot of mobility, a lot of movement, and traffic is one of the ways that you know, when you see a lot of traffic, you know there's a lot of people living in that particular city. And so as an investor, you can actually look into those areas. It doesn't have to be the high ticket areas. A lot of times people want to get the, you know, the VIs and the all these high, um, very urbanized areas. But you can actually go into the prairie urban um, and, you know, almost rural areas and invest in those areas because in another year or so, the value of property in that area would have increased significantly. So I would say, yes, it is scary. However, start small, aim long. Um, it's not something you just jump into, but it's something that if you have a proper strategy, you know what your budget is, and you also look at what the trends are, you do very well in the industry. So these are uh, the, uh, the things to look out for when you're thinking about viable options for investment mm -hmm. uh, but you were talking about either coming in as a, an investor or as a developer mm -hmm. some people mm -hmm. may not even know the difference uh, of that so <laughs> let's get to know uh, what it takes or what it means to be a developer rather than an in investor so for the so investors really can be me and you right in the sense that you know you have the money and you're looking for where to you know invest your money same way you would invest in other forms of commodities, right? Um, so that's what I mean about coming in as an investor. However, 
if you are looking to build communities, which is where development comes in, you build into communities, there's quite a lot that you need to look into. Um, again, number one would obviously be location. You're also looking at things like your trends and your costs as well, because the cost of the properties that you were, or the units that you would have built a month ago are significantly higher now, significantly higher now than it was like a month or two months ago. So as a developer, you're more on building communities. You're more on building house, housing options that people would live in. Um, however, as an investor, you're just looking to see how you can increase your gains um, and have maximum return on your investment on land or real estate in general. Mm, interesting. Um, there, there, there is talk that Lagos, with the kind of population that we have, should go high. Uh, rather than uh, wh uh, where it is right now. So what is the reason behind Lagos not going high? Having buildings like 26-story buildings, 50-story buildings to house a lot of people and affordable buildings at that. What, is, what do you think is the reason or the challenge? Uh, um, so I'm, I'm unable to speak to us what the challenge is. However, um, I would say that when you look at just the overall landscape of Lagos as a city, my questions would be, are we able to even do that? I know a lot of times there is the assumption that, yes, we should be like all the other metropolitan cities um, we find across the world. However, for us as Lagos, we can have some parts of Lagos that can do that. However, in other parts of Lagos, it's not something that is, um, is not going to be possible. But like I said, it's not something, because I am not, um, in terms of construction, that is more of a construction question, yeah. because my technical expertise is not um, towards construction, I won't be able to speak to why is it possible? I think it's something that I should take up with my team. Why is it not possible for us to build more, um, I would say, skyscrapers or more of properties that um, that can house more people? Yeah, I wasn't thinking uh, in, in terms of you being a constructor or something. <laughs> I was thinking maybe there's a deliberate policy against high-rise mm -hmm. buildings like that, that you have... Uh, for instance, if you want to develop an area and you say, I want a skyscraper in this place, the government could tell you, mm -hmm. we don't do that in yes, Lagos so because yes. of X, Y, Z. So I thought you had mm -hmm. information uh, regarding that. <laughs> okay, but there's... No, but, okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, no, no, you, you, you go ahead. Okay. There is also this thing you call fractional ownership. We need to understand what that means. Okay, so fractional ownership is... Um, looking for the best way to break it down is investment in the smallest form when it comes to real estate. We introduce fractional ownership as we find that a lot of people want to invest in real estate, but they struggle because they do not have the bulk funds. We just had the conversation around affordable, so they don't have the funds to be able to do your 200, 300, or 500, um, 500 square meters, which would be a plot, a full plot, um, in some cases 600 square meters. However, with fractional ownership, you are able to invest one square meter at a time, which means that you're looking to buy a fraction of a particular area. And as time goes on, you can continue to get more um, square meters. And when you get to a particular number, maybe 300 or 500, you can that convert that into actually having a plot which you'd use to build, or you could decide to sell. Um, and when you look at places like Lagos, I imagine if we had something like that in Banana Island, when Banana Island was set up, a lot of us would be millionaires by now. Reason because you're able to buy ship and then you take it from there. Now, this is not a brand new concept. It's something that is quite known in other parts of the world. However, for us, um, Landry has introduced it um, through its sister company, Onland, just making sure that it's making real estate investments um, accessible to everyone. I really don't understand buying um, one square meter at a time and then you're buying another time yes. when you, are, you have the means. Uh, how is it possible? Right. I'm just thinking about this, the location, mm -hmm. you know, I'm buying one square meter here on Banana Island yeah. and another one in Ikuli mm -hmm. and all that. It, is that how it works? Mm -hmm. No. So what it is, is we have 
so using Landry as an example, we have an array of properties in different areas. Now, as an investor, say yourself or anyone else who is interested, you can okay. say, look, I have a spare um you know, figure 200, 500,000. And I would really like to invest in real estate. However, this money cannot get me the kind of property that I want. Or however, I want to be able to increase my income and make my money work for me. And so it's more of your capital gain and a higher return on investment. Just like I said earlier, real estate or um yeah real estate is one of the surest ways of investment so what it does with fractional ownership is it gives you and i the opportunity to invest one square meter at a time right and what i mean by that is you can say okay um say one of our products um one of our properties it's one square meter is about two hundred thousand naira so you start off with two hundred thousand naira and then the next the next time you do another one square meter and you just continue and and in a few years you're able to resell and get a return so think of it when it comes to fractional ownership in real estate think of it of how you would trade in your stock market, right? Where you buy shares of a company and then after a while, you're able to sell. Um, it's very much, you know, not exactly the same concept, but it's very much close to it in the sense that you can buy square meters and you are either buying with the goal of um, converting to build in future or with the goal of reselling in future. And I hope that that helps. Okay, yeah, it helps. But if I want more information, <laughs> I'll have to contact you to have a yes, sit down please. for one hour to explain it to me. But okay, <laughs> here's the thing. Let's say I had a father that has a, uh, had a house and mm -hmm. now I am in that house. And mm -hmm. I do not have money to develop that house to the standards that is required now. But mm -hmm. I do not want to lose that house in the uh, at the same time. How does the real estate developers or investors come in so that they can develop my house? I will still mm -hmm. be a, a house owner, but I may mm -hmm. not need to pay everything for that house, if you understand me. Do you have a package, a package like that in real estate? So I would say in real estate, so you have your JVs, your joint ventures, which you can do with your real estate developers. And basically what that means is you own the property, so you own the land, okay. and you want to... Um, I'll just give an example. You want to build, say, a block of flats, mm -hmm. or you would like to build a block of flats, or you would like to build a bunch of detached houses mm -hmm. in that property. What you would do is have an agreement with the um, developers where they develop. So the land remains yours, right? They develop, and then you then have what is like a, a sharing, like a profit sharing. Um, you can keep one of the properties. However, you're also able to earn income from the other ones that are there. It's, it's something that is very well known in the space where a lot of people who have land are able to have partnerships or joint ventures with developers. And developers typically look out for such opportunities because it means that they don't have to buy the land, but they are able to have, it's it's just, you know, um, it's a partnership that works. And, um, but they're able to build and the person who owns the land is also able to get value and as well as increased income from that land as well. Okay, uh, this is funny, but um, let me just <laughs> ask you. In Lagos, we have what is really scary to investors in that uh, sector, the Omoniles. How do you cope with that? A private person um, <laughs> can buy a plot and you are not sure, or even after building, mm -hmm. you are not sure that it belongs yeah. to you. How, how do you mm -hmm. navigate those waters? So... So I would say for us as Landway, there's a lot of, we do a lot of um, engaging, there's a lot of collaboration, a lot of conversation with Omonile. However, I would also say that if you're buying any property, it's important to do your due diligence. And in doing your due diligence is before you put your money down, ask questions. Also, um, go to the regular, the proper ministries um, to get information on that particular 
um, property and you know in terms of ownership and and um, yeah and documentation as well we find that a lot of times people just buy based on the words of what has been given to them without actually doing their due diligence so at, on one front so on that front I would say please do your due diligence it's very very important on the other front um, in engaging with Omonile there is a lot of conversation that goes on um, I cannot go into details uh, when it comes to that um, but I know for us at Landway we as much as possible we've had situations where we had a particular property and then the Omonile came and said look they're, they're the ones who own this property and we almost had to like you know um, re-engage them as well so I would say um, for us as an organization and for a lot of other organizations like ours, there's a lot of dialogue that goes on with the Omonile um, to ensure that um, everything is done well. But most of all, for if you as a private person would like to get a property, please do your due diligence and please get information from the appropriate ministries and ensure that that land, the documentation on that land is actually correct. I'm concerned about the fact that Omonile may be just a Nigerian thing. You may not find that in the UK, for instance, or America. And is it a product of bad policy or uh, we should just leave it to chance? Can't the government do something about it? And if they can, what can they do? I believe that there's, the government can do something about it. Again, it's a lot of engagement that needs to be done, a lot of dialogue that needs to be done. I think what also needs to be done with regards to the Omanile is also for them to see what the value that is being brought to their communities. Um, they are being protective of their communities, um, if, if that's the way to put it. However, if they are not being, if they are not being engaged accordingly, and they are not being, and they are not seeing the value of what is being, what is being brought, um, we would continue to have this challenge that we have with with Omanile um, and what you call land grabbers. Um, so, I would plead with the government to see how can we have more of these sessions, um, and also for the government to intervene and also to ensure that in terms of documentation of these properties, it's it's done right. Um, we find that sometimes there are certain gaps when it comes to documentation, which is what leaves room for things like this to happen. So with better um, processes and with better dialogues with all stakeholders involved, we should be able to solve this challenge that we have. Mm. The process of acquiring land and having a deed for it, um, a C of O for instance, is so long, I hear mm -hmm. the governor has to sign. Yes. Um, so yes. So there is the governor's consent. However, there are other documentation that you can you can have, um, and and I think that's another area where we also plead with the government to see how we can make this process seamless. Um, it's a lot that needs to be changed in our policies on on that particular front. And then, whenever I have the opportunity, I like to unravel some of the jargon of any profession. Now. I hear something like ISIM. Um, let me get to understand what that is and what the futures are uh, that mark that kind of a package out. Sorry, could you please, I didn't, I didn't get you. Could you please repeat that question? ISIMI. -I. <laughs> there. So, what are the innovative features that we should know about what you call ISIMI? -I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Isimi is what you mean. <laughs> um, so Isimi Lagos is our... Um, you call it Isimi? Isimi, yes, Isimi. Okay. Isimi. Yes, okay. Isimi. Yes, um, Isimi is a word. Okay, go ahead. Yes, it it means rest. So Isimi Lagos is um, our um, development over um, at, in the Ekbe Access. It's right next to the Lagos Film City that was just recently launched. Um, or the groundbreaking ceremony for the Isimi for the Lagos Film City. And Isimi is a wellness and um, a wellness 
and a sustainable and a sustainable city. Um, we want to take people back to the very beginning. Um, when I say very beginning, I say taking people back to live with nature, and that is to encourage people to be able to live in an environment where there is better air, where they are able to, you know, farm, where they are able to um, have that wholesome living. Lagos is a very, very busy place and there's so much so much going on. A lot of and in a lot of ways it's it's great as a metropolitan city. However, what Isimi provides is a a looking for the right words. What Isimi provides is an area where you are able to sort of disconnect from the hustle and bustle of Lagos. Is it but some at kind the same of time, can you? Is can it you some kind me? of resort that you're do, doing? Here? So it's not just a resort. So, and that's why I was like, it's I, I'm not. It's not just a resort. It is actually a a city on its own. Now, if you want to call it a resort, fine. But it's not just a resort. It is a wellness city, and that's what Isimi is. It is really just a city where you are able to be in touch with nature. Um, and then you know there are quite a number of things um, in terms of the things that will be made available in Simi. We have the polo, we have the, the polo club, we have golf as well. So it's really just making people be in touch with nature and bring in rest, a place of rest. And that's really what Simi is about. Okay, well, um, Simi, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Michelle, I would like to say thank you to you for coming on the program this morning and so telling much. us about real estate. We do hope that Every house will be affordable to all of us in the nearest future. Thank you so much for being a part of our program. Thank you. Okay. We've been talking with Ms. Sheila OJ. Uh, she is the Chief Executive Officer of Landway Investment Limited. And we were looking at, at real estate now that we have a challenge in uh, housing in Nigeria. When the government does its own part, what can the private sector do? And that's where she filled in. And we're very glad that we were able to have her on the show this morning. And this eventually is where we wrap it up on the show. My name is Nyamgul Agaji, thanking you for being a part of this uh, breakfast today. And on behalf of the entire team, I also say thank you. Up next is the news brief.